So when you are learning L2, we don't actually uh, say that it's not wrong. It's wrong. So teachers usually don't they, they don't care. They don't mind about the uh, slips because you know students are learning. Uh, sometimes even good teachers or very fluent teachers also make slips. Okay, because we are not native speakers. So it's, it's inevitable for us to make some slips here and there. Because it's now, um, I think it was Afika. Afika Khalid. You said, that's mean, isn't it? It should be, that means. Okay, so that is slips. Okay, slips. So we don't really mind. Okay, so interlanguage uh, is also influencing the errors uh, or performance errors. Performance errors are also slips. Okay, hypothesis testing. This is when um, L2 students, they, when they come in, they start to coin words. Do you know what coin means? They join. Join two words together, which doesn't make sense. But to them, it makes sense. Wow. Ah. Can you think of your own time when you do this? Cuba try. Cuba try. That is actually word coinage. Okay? Cuba is in bahasa. It means the same thing as try in English. But we use it all the time. Cuba try. Cuba try test uji. It means the same thing, isn't it? That is word coinage. Okay? Trying to form new word structure when L2 make up words as if, as if it could and should be in the target language. So when you cannot find the equivalent to L1 in the target language, you coin words. Okay? Ah, that's word coinage. Uh, there are a lot of word coinage these days. Uh, especially in the jargon of young people. If you listen to your, your students when you are in school, you all, remember? U-O-L-L-S. Uh, ah, that is a word coinage actually. It's from English, but it has been BM, it has been turned into Bahasa. Okay? So, those are the things like uh, word coinage. But that one is not, I think it's, uh, that one is, uh, we call it as, uh, um, uh, we, they do it on purpose. It's not because they don't know the words. It's just to, to make it, make things sound uh, hipper, isn't it? Uh, instead of you, all of you. There's no you all, you know. That's all of you. All of you, please stand up. There's no you all, please stand up. That is very Malaysianized. Very Malaysianized. There's no you all. All of you. The correct way is all of you. So, when you go into classes, don't use you all. You all ni. Uh, that is bahasa, you know. Uh, not uh, English. Proper English is all of you. Okay. It's the same thing as you guys. There's no such thing as you guys. It's all of you. Proper English is all of you, eh? not you guys. And guys actually refers to men or boys. But it has been widely used as people, collective people. So these are the things that you have to uh, actually uh, be aware of. Fossilization. Fossilization means you are stuck with a fixed system of linguistic forms that do not match the target language model. You also, you are stuck with it and after a few years of using it, you feel that it's okay. Okay? Same thing like um, ain't. Have you heard of the word ain't? A-I-N apostrophe T. Okay, D-O-E-S-N apostrophe T. What does it stand for? Does not. Uh, a R E N apostrophe T? Aren't or are not. I S N apostrophe T? Isn't or is not. So what is ain't for? A I N apostrophe T. It's not M not. M not is M not. Ain't, there's not, no such word actually as ain't. There's no such word as A not. But it has been accepted. 
Because a lot of people are using it But actually there's no such word as ain't Because you cannot separate it from the contraction is, Isn't is, is not Aren't is are not Okay, so you cannot separate ain't Another one is uh, I don't have uh, I don't have no money Double negative Double negative is actually positive I don't have any money If you say I don't have no money Meaning that you have money It's double negative So it becomes positive Okay, I don't have any money I don't have money I have no money So it's either I don't have Or I don't I, I have no money So you, can, you cannot use I don't have no money It means double negative Okay Okay, uh, Corder 1967 says that there are a few conceptions of error. Uh, before this, behaviorist uh, says that it's a behaviorist where it comes from habit transfer. Where you transfer from L1, your mother tongue, to your to the target language. Like la and kan. And for the Chinese, you say ma. Isn't it? Uh, no ma? Uh, no me. So that is interference of the L1. That is behavior is because you have been using it for so long. Since you were little, it becomes something which is normal. Habitual. Uh, habitual uh, formation. But it's still not wrong. But that is what Corda say. The errors come from Habits And remember when you were In, in uh, primary school You were taught that um, Past tenses have got three types Okay The irregular verbs The non-changing verbs And the verb that you have to add ed Isn't it So habit transformation also um, Means that sometimes you, you read As uh, fight As fighted Fight it because of habit formation. You are not exposed to the irregular verb so much. Fight becomes fighted instead of fought. <coughs> foxes, fox become foxes. What is the actual uh, what is the actual uh, plural form for fox? Fox or foxen. Ox Oxen Okay, not oxes Okay So, uh, these are the things that It's been habitualized Because you've got that rule in your uh, In your, your mind that everything has to add ed Past tense Or has to add x uh, s, s's at, uh, at the end of each verb uh, Sorry, each noun To make it turn into plural So, these are habitual formation it can be minimized through the implementation of new habits So remember, just now, some of you said uh, the, ab about the uh, concrete and abstract noun So you said set, sadness You were not really sure which one is noun, which one is verb, isn't it? Sorry, not verb, adjective So, it can be minimized This, be, uh, this um, behaviorist or habitual uh, practice can be minimized through normal New practice Meaning teacher Is the one who should implement the new Rule So when you go to school Students are usually using the word Oxen Oxes Foxes So it's your job to Change the habit It's not easy Because it's been ingrained from Standard 1 Maybe before the teachers Did not uh, realise the mistake but when they go to um, prim uh, secondary school, they need to be changed. The habit needs to be changed. Okay? Mentalist, not the TV show, okay? <laughs> Mentalist is current conception. So you have two types of conception. One is behaviorist, one is mentalist. 
Errors give evidence to the available linguistic system of the learner. This is actually um, form from current, meaning when you are learning L2, that's when you uh, you you adopt the the uh, errors. Meaning maybe you learn from people who are not fluent. You learn from your friends, or you learn from a teacher who's not well versed. So you adopt the errors from somebody during the current conception. So it's not meant, uh, it's not habits. It's from the present conception, present learn. So maybe you you learn from your tuition teachers, for example. Uh, you learn from your friends. You learn from your your surroundings. You learn from the TV. Okay. Sometimes TV also plays a very big part in uh, errors. Yes, isn't it? Can you give me an example? Usually in terms of translation. Okay, in terms of translation. When you read the translation, you read the subtitles. Sometimes we learn English through using uh, subtitles. That's how we learn new vocabulary. But sometimes you learn the wrong vocabulary. Okay, uh, because um, I saw one sign they posted in Facebook. Park at your own risk. What does it mean? Park at your own risk. Okay, the risk is yours. There's no guarantee. If you park your car, if anything happens to your car, nobody will be responsible except for yourself. Okay, the translation was Taman Taman Atas risiko sendiri So if those who are not familiar With the language And they learn through this type of things You know sometimes uh, our, our children They learn through this type of things Or uh, they will go back and say Oh, park is actually taman Yes, true But if you if In that context It's not taman, isn't it? It's Parkir, parkir, a verb, parkir di atas risiko sendiri, tanggung risiko sendiri jika parkir di sini, parkir, park, but because of the translation, things go wrong, so that is mental, uh, current conception, where you learn through, not habit, but you learn during the process of your learning, you get the errors during the process of the learning. Okay. For example, um, uh, poem. When you were in school, did your teacher men uh, did your teacher say poem or poem? Poem. Poem. There's a Y there, right? Uh, it's actually poem. 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 Not poem. Not poet. Poet. Okay. So. These are the things you get during your school days. Okay? Reduce the language to a simpler system. Reveals the learner, learner's tendency to induce rules. Uh, for example, salmon. But usually pronunciation is not that... Uh, we don't really particularly uh, look at pronunciation unless it's really wrong. Uh, for example, salmon. Usually it's, it's a silent L. Salmon. Okay, salmon or herb instead of herb. It's the same as our, H-O-U-R. H-O-U-R is silent H, isn't it? Our, so uh, herb. But if you say herb, there's no one who will uh, judge you or penalize you because uh, it's not something that we are, we are brought up with. Okay, we don't know. If we know, we know. Okay, salmon without the L. Okay. Distinction between errors and mistakes. Okay, this is what Corden said. It's quite old, but I feel that uh, he still say the right thing. Error, regular patterns in learners' speech. We are talking about speech, yeah? Which consistently differ from the target language. This regularity of such pattern reveal learners' underlying competence. The system of rules that governs his speech. So sometimes errors come uh, because of the rules that the 
speaker has used for example as i said just now fox foxes fight fighted the rules that govern the speech okay mistakes are memory lapse slip of the tongue and other instances of performance errors so if you look at the two definition which one is very which one is more pressing to be corrected pressing which one is more important to be corrected errors or mistake errors errors because errors are system of rules if you get the system right you will get it right if the system is wrong then you will make errors mistakes are just memory lapse lapsed slip of tongue as i said just now mice's mouses instead of mice still okay so error are things that you should look out for when you are teaching errors are the things that you should amend or you should rectify rather than mistake we don't usually go around and amend every mistake that the students make this will demotivate them okay and it will make them be more pessimistic in the classroom they will not volunteer to answer because this teacher is always correcting them isn't it you will get bored as well if i'm always correcting you every five sentence i stop you and i say okay everything is wrong isn't it so you have to know which one is error which one is mistake then only you correct them even errors you need to look at what type of errors then you can correct them if you are looking at if you if they are speaking if they are look uh, they are using words maybe you may not correct the words used because you are looking at sentence structure for example so you only correct sentence structure so even in errors you have to identify what type of errors so that not everything is being corrected at that time okay learners can correct own mistakes slips of the tongue can be correctable by your own self but errors are often part of the current system and hence not recognizable to the learners as wrong uh, so the part there needs the teachers to point out actually they are making mistakes uh, sorry errors usually if you make mistakes you can correct them yourselves but if you make errors sometimes you don't know whether it's wrong you you feel that it's right okay but actually it is wrong so teachers play a very very big part in identifying errors for the students okay when you have identified errors some of the questions that you need to ask before you actually correct the students should learners errors be corrected this is when you go into the classroom and then uh, you have actually conducted some activities with the students and then you uh, identify certain errors so what you do is you ask yourself should learners errors be corrected okay should they be corrected when should learners errors be corrected when is the right time to correct learners errors when is the right time so do you correct it there and then do you stop the student and then correct it there and then or do you um, gather all the work and then correct it in the next lesson that is the judgment of the teacher you have to choose you have to select what time is considered good for you to correct students errors okay which errors should be corrected the next question is which errors should be corrected do you correct everything do you correct just the meaning do you correct just the verbs just the sentence structure just the syntax uh, you have to answer that as well how do you do that through looking at your learning objective what is the focus of your lesson that day then you will know which to correct okay 
How should the uh, uh, errors be corrected? Do you just call them up? Do you write it in the books? Do you call them up after class? Okay, these are also questions that you need to answer. You need to ask yourself before actually uh, correct errors. How should errors be corrected? And who should do the correction? Is it peer correction? Teacher correction? Self correction? Now you can also have Mr. Google correction. Isn't it? Ah. So who should do the correction? Some students may like it if all, all the time teachers do the correction. Some may like it if their friends do the correction. Some may not like it. Some may like it if they themselves do the correction. They go and find out what is wrong and they find the right answers. So you have to know who should do the correction. So these are the five main questions that you should ask yourself as teachers when you go into classroom and you are dealing with error correction. Okay? Okay. What do you correct? There are three types of errors that should be focused on. Can you can you guess? Grammar. Grammar, okay. Anyone else want to uh, try? Pronunciation. Pronunciation, spelling, right. sentence structure. Anything else? When you were in school, what did your teacher correct? Mostly grammar. When you pass up your essays, sentence. sentence. Okay, let's look at what three types of errors that we should focus on. The first one is high frequency errors. High frequency errors meaning that majority of the errors were made by the class. Maybe wrong word or sentence structure. Or vocabulary everyone or not everyone but almost everyone did the same thing so that is high frequency error that should be corrected because everyone is doing the same error okay high frequency errors or another type of high frequency errors is when every time that comes up they will make error meaning that they will do it often the same error often that is also high frequency error. Stigmatizing error. Stigmatizing error is rule by uh, rule by rule of thumb, meaning that uh, they have already got the rules when they were uh, in primary school. That is stigmatizing error. Okay, like habits, errors which block meaning and hinder understanding. So meaning. Errors which block meaning, meaning that when they do the error, it means something else. They wanted to write about something, but instead when they write about it, it becomes something else. So those are the things that should be focused on. Especially the C. The C one. Errors which block meaning and hinder understanding. When it distorts meaning, that's when you have to correct errors. Okay? Error types. Errors causing misunderstanding or breakdown of communication. Translation. Just now. I've mentioned just now. Park at your own risk. Or, remember I told you the story about duck? Yeah? It becomes, instead of tundo, it becomes ite. Okay? Those are big errors. Translation. When you translate, it's very, very important to make sure your translation is good. If you use translation, Google Translate, you also always need to look at the translation. Because sometimes the translation does not really gel. So you cannot just use uh, the translation 100%. Okay? Next. What uh, Afika said just now, grammar. 
confusing and complex grammar pattern. I ride a big blue old bus today. Which comes first? There is actually a rule. There is actually a rule. Can it be I come, I, I rode the old big bus blue, sorry, the old big blue bus today. Or the big old blue bus today. There is a rule. So you have to follow that rule. So that is confusing and complex grammar pattern. Okay, so you have to know which comes first. Even though they are all adjectives. Okay, there is a set rule. Okay. Long and winding sentences. Sometimes you get students who like to write without stopping. A whole paragraph, only one sentence. Okay? So that has to be corrected as well. Because there's no break in the sentence. They use a lot of conjunctions, uh, sentence connectors until one paragraph. That, but there's only one sentence in that paragraph. So that has to be corrected as well. Okay? Long and winding sentences. Less pressing but irritating errors. So before this, we look at um, what was it? Errors that cause misunderstanding or breakdown. So the next one is less pressing. Not so not so uh, important, but sometimes very irritating because you find it over and over again. Okay. This is these are the things. Wrong tense. I think you do this the same as well. When you write long things, you sometimes jumble up the tenses. Whether, uh, should I use past tense, should I use present tense, sometimes you use present tense and then you go to past tense. It's not wrong, but it's very irritating. Isn't it? Non-agreement. I are going to school tomorrow. She am not going. Wrong agreement. SV agreement. Word order. So can, can. <laughs> ah, also can, can also. Okay? So word order. As I said just now, big, blue, old bus or old, blue, big bus or blue, old, big bus. Ah. Articles omitted. SMS language. Articles, all the er, uh, the ah, uh, sorry, the ah, uh, the and, the does are all not there. Instead of there is a book on the tree, book on tree, book on tree. There is a book on the tree, but all the articles are gone, so it becomes book on tree. The the, the er, uh, the and is not there. Articles omitted. Punctuations. Instead of question mark, you put exclamation mark. So, a question or a request becomes an order. Isn't it? There is a big difference between exclamation and question mark. Can I go? Can I go? Can I go and can I go are two different things. Isn't it? And spelling mistake. Spelling mistake. Two G's become one G, for example. Color. Color, okay, you use the American spelling, then the U's are all gone. Okay, in Malaysia, we are supposed to use the British version. C E N T T R E or T E R? T R E. T E R is American, okay? C O L O U R. All the U should be there. Humor. H U M O U R. Not H U M O R. Because we are using the British English. So spelling mistakes. So these are less pressing but very irritating. It doesn't really uh, hinder meaning. But it's very irritating if it's all the time. Okay? And the last error is style error, stylistic error. Sometimes you use inappropriate style. You're supposed to write formal letters, but you don't have the salutation. Okay, you don't have salutation. You don't have the proper salutation. 
dia abang dekan for example okay so you are writing a formal letter but you are writing informally so that is inappropriate isn't it ah dia abang dekan and then prof rashid will put a, uh, a noose around your neck and hang you Okay, so these are the things that you should be aware of Inappropriate style If you don't know that person, you don't use dear You only use dear in letters when that person is known to you Familiar to you And if you are writing informal letters ah, Okay, if you don't know that person, we don't usually use dear and you need to know the salutation. Malaysians are very big on salutations. Who, uh, which comes first? The datuk comes first, or the datin sri comes first. And then some people have got datin sri, professor, doctor, haja. So you have to know those things. So those are appropriate styles. Okay. All right. So you have to know that sometimes you have to uh, be aware. And this is stylistic errors, style errors. Formal, informal, for example. For example, if you are writing a manual on process and procedure. In process and procedure, what is the most important thing that you have to have? Sequence, yes. One more. Connectors. Firstly, secondly, then, next, after that, furthermore, finally. Those are styles Okay Wrong format uh, Wrong format is when you uh, Decide to give uh, Descriptive writing But then it's a narrative writing So that is wrong format Or if you want to write limerick Limerick has got only five Lines There is a lady called Sandy Something like that But instead you write limerick in 14 lines it has become a ballad sorry a sonnet sonnet has got 14 lines isn't it so that's a wrong format types of corrective feedback explicit correction ah this is the first thing that you have to do one is explicit correction indicating the students errors teacher correct the form so you do it there and then when the students make mistakes, you correct them simultaneously. That is explicit correction. Recast. Recast means indirectly indicate students' errors. So you don't point out explicitly. Teacher implicitly formulate the errors or give correction. So you don't say, okay, just now uh, you have the uh, Hanani. Have, made, uh, have done it wrong uh, It actually should be this That is explicit correction Implicit uh, recast is when A uh, lot of students do the same Make the same error So you can recast Clarification request So Teacher indicates message Made by students has not been understood And a reformulation is required So when you say okay I saw two mouses Last night, mouses? Do you mean mice? Uh, that is actually clarification. Oh, mouses? What is the uh, correct plural for mouse? Uh, that is clarification request. When you ask the students back what they have said, okay? Meta linguistic clues. Teacher provide question or remarks. Relating to the formation of the student's utterances So when you have found some errors What you should have done is you should refer, uh, give them some clues to, For them to amend their errors uh, Those are better linguistic clues Maybe you give them questions Okay, um, All of you have read uh, The Pearl? Yeah? Okay, what does Kino do? Kino was a pearl diver So if they say, oh Kino was a fisherman and then you say, uh, do you th uh, is it true? Do you think that Kino uh, uh, fish? What does he do? What was the story about? Pearl, the pearl. So it must, uh, you have to make the link between Kino's job as the, and the title. So they will be able to do that. 
that is meta linguistic clues. You give them clue until they come, uh, they they arrive at the right answer. Okay. Elis, uh, elicitation. Teacher directly elicit the correct form from students through questioning. Differs from meta linguistic clues because. Elicitation require more than yes and no answer. So if you say meta linguistic clue, there's only yes or no. Just now I, I asked you, isn't it? Uh, was Kino a fisherman? Uh, what was the title? Uh, so that is um, meta linguistic clues. Elicitation it is a longer um, answer. You ask students to provide longer answers. Okay. And a repetition. Teacher repeats student utterances and use a different tone. Mouses, mouses. You you give them a different tone. Mouses to indicate that there has been a there has been an error. Okay. How much correction is needed? First, you have to decide the priority. You have to prioritize. What do you correct? Again, you go back to the five questions in the beginning of the slides. How much do you correct? Okay, first you have to decide the priorities. You have to agree on the method of correction. Who will correct the uh, the errors? Okay. Device follow up work for individual and the whole class. Usually, if you talk about spelling mistakes or uh, grammar, not grammar, spelling or vocabulary, sometimes you can rely on the friends. The friends can actually help the students to correct the errors, but it's difficult if it's sentence structure, sentence structure or word choice. Then it's more on the teacher's part to do the correction. Okay. What kinds of correction? Not if correction, ah, of correction. What kinds of correction? Teacher correction. Effective, very effective, because the teacher should know. The correct answer, but it should be use the list. Uh, what happened in the classroom is that most of the time teacher will do the correction. Most of the time, ninety five percent of the time, teacher will correct the students. But according to experts, that is the least frequent that you should use because we don't want students to depend on teacher. Never mind. I can do it. Uh, if it's wrong, the teacher will always show me what's right. Okay. So that is the least should be used. The least in the classroom. Teacher correction. Self correction. Help student to internalize the correct form. But self correction can only be done with advanced group of students. If they are beginners or low proficiency. It's very difficult to self-correct. So if you have a very well uh, ability, high ability students, very advanced, then they can self-correct. Okay. So it it can only uh, be used with very very specific students. Peer correction, correction and terrell, correction terrell. They are very familiar with uh, second language acquisition. Says that it is the best way. Because it helps students to help each other develop English language skills with less interference of their respective affective filters. However, there is also a however. You need to be very careful of the student's personality. Sometimes good students can be bossy and domineering. You know, I know everything. You should listen to me. Something like that. But uh, correction terror said peer correction is the best way to use in class. If the students are of the same, not same level, but they can accept their friends' correction. Okay. So uh, there are three types of correction. One is peer, self, and teacher correction. But the best, according to correction terror, peer correction. It is also uh, complies with Vygotsky's zone of proximal development. Scaffolding, isn't it? Where students help each other to fill up the scaffold. Uh, so it's better to have your friends. But sometimes, as I say, sometimes your friends will be some the, the ones who are 
mocking you. He said, itu pun tak tahu, isn't it? That one also you don't know ah. Ah, that if you get that kind of friends, change friends. Ah, that teacher has to monitor. Yes, immediately. Teacher has to monitor. That one you put alone. Don't let her in or him with other people because they will demotivate their friends. Okay? Ah, we will get that kind of student. But however, the best one is a true peer. Teacher correction. This is talking about oral again. Does the teacher notice the error? So if you don't notice, don't correct. Of course, you cannot notice. You don't correct. Okay. If notice, does the the teacher let it pass or correct it? So that is what you have to do. If you notice the error, you have to make the the decision whether you just let it go or you correct it. If it's pressing, then you have to correct it. If it's just minor mistakes or slips, then uh, let it be. Immediate, mid-sentence interruption. Uh, this one. Sometimes teachers like to do this. What they do is when the student is giving a speech or when the student is answering, they stop in mid-sentence mid and then they correct. Okay. Sometimes it can inhibit students' willingness to speak. Yeah, you know, some students are very uh, enthusiastic. They will speak so, and then the teacher will stop and say, hey, actually, you have made something wrong just now. You have made an error. You, you have said this. You should have said this. And then the ideas all are gone. Because you are, you are disrupted in the midst of idea. And then the idea flow will stop. And then he or she will not be able to continue. So that may not be a good uh, time to correct students. Oh, sorry. Okay, delay. That is immediate delay. Feedback becomes less effective. So if you wait, next week, you will amend next week. The error is done this week, but you will wait until next week and then you correct. So it becomes less effective. One, they will not remember what they have done or they have said. Two, sometimes it's not so effective. Okay, it's not so effective. Students may forget the correction and make the same error in a different situation. And feedback must be done in a way that does not demoralize the student. So maybe you can collect, gather uh, errors, not just hone in on one error. So you gather errors and then you do it in uh, as a whole class. So that is more effective, right? Decide which treatment to... Uh, provide okay long propose uh, three option one is inform learner that an error has been made okay and he's not saying when but you need to inform them that uh, an error has been made inform learner location of the error so when you uh, go back to your own school days when you are doing, uh, when you were doing your essays, when you get back from the teachers, what did you find on your essay? Uh, circles, stri uh, stringly lines, um, inverted V's, isn't it? And then they close and open bracket. So those are location of the error. Inform learner the identity of the error, meaning. Is it a verb error, word order, sentence structure, grammar error? Okay. Peer correction. Uh, this is because uh, if you use peer correction, then it will be less dependency on the student. It will involve the whole class. Usually when uh, you do peer correction, you do it with the whole class. You don't do it uh, individually or sometimes in pairs. But as I say just now, in pairs, it may be another thing. When you have one pair who is a dominating person, it's better to do it in groups. Okay? Teacher moves around to check progress. So it must, as, as just now what you said, sometimes you know, your teacher has to go and see whether the couple or the pair is 
is compatible if not then you have to change okay teacher has to move around and pro, uh, check progress and teacher should encourage collaboration and cohesiveness meaning that uh, maybe um, students who are good in the word errors help students who are not so good and then the next round the other students who are good in other types of errors help the ones who are not so good in that type of error so cohesiveness and collaboration will help students to uh, to amend their errors okay peer correction with the class as a whole ask several students checking questions to see if they have understood that is why when you have finished giving instruction to the to the students what you need to do is you need to ask them questions checking questions every time you instruct them the next is to ask checking question whether they have understood or not uh, so you have done that in your micro teaching most of the time when you give instruction you will ask the students to repeat your instruction or you will ask your students to actually uh, illustrate what you have asked them to do you cannot just ask the standard normal do you understand question then you will get standard normal yes answer okay allow students time to self correct sometimes what we do is we rush students we rush students into doing things i give you 5 minutes then exactly 5 minutes you will stop them they are not robots even though you say 5 minutes allow a few more minutes for them to to do the exercises or to self correct sometimes ideas don't come in a gif ideas come after a few minutes if a particular student fail to answer correctly move on to another student so if for example i'm asking you you cannot answer go on to the next student don't wait until she comes up with an answer if she doesn't know she doesn't know okay you're not wasting you, you don't waste your time don't punish the student it's bad enough that she doesn't know it's worse if you just wait for her to answer which she can't do that okay so she can't answer go on to the next person go on to the next person okay until you get an answer if the whole class fail to answer then teacher needs to teach the language item reteach meaning that there is something wrong with your teaching because the whole class cannot answer so you need to reteach the language item okay group peer correction uh, you put them into groups and then they correct each other can be done in pairs or small groups so it's better to be doing it in small groups because you will get different people with different abilities okay some drawbacks of group peer correction oh, sorry personal relationship uh, if you are best friend bff with your pair your bff may ignore the mistake you make okay even though it's very big and glaring but if they don't like that person then everything will be corrected isn't it everything will be corrected if you don't like that person then everything she or he does is wrong if you like that person even though it's a big mistake you tend to close your eyes this is also in relationship not just in classroom isn't it so if you're best friend with your with uh, with the person then they will not amend the mistakes or errors that the other person makes so uh, that is one drawback corrections are not guaranteed correct not not mouses lah wrong it's mice ha the blind leading the blind ha okay betul it's not mouse you are wrong the right answer is mice hmm dua-dua pun sama ke laut okay so the corrections are not guaranteed correct the errors may be may not be the language focus that the teacher is teaching you are teaching them grammar tenses but they are correcting vocabulary they are correcting uh, sentence structure which is not the language that you are focusing so that can also be another drawback okay so these are some drawbacks that you have or you should anticipate when you are using group peer correction 
Okay? And some students do not like to be corrected. They feel that it's something like demeaning to them if they make errors. So, uh, you have to either do the correction by the teacher that yourself or you ask the students to look it up themselves. Use the internet. Nowadays, it's very easy. You, they can just go grammar online, for example. They use any application on the smartphone. They are able to get the correct answers. Okay, so some students, they just don't like to be corrected. It's human nature, right? Correcting oral, uh, oral utterances. First, you uh, look at conversational drilling. These are the techniques that you use. Outframe. Outframe meaning you give the same structure, different uh, objects. Remind of original utterances. Check intended meaning. Reintroduce structure. Get agreement on new structure. Check again the meaning. Elicit structure again. And extend content. This is conversational drilling. If you want to ask students specific conversational sentence structure. Okay? This is uh, how you do it. Right. If you want to correct writing errors, uh, this gets more interesting. Some indication. When I post it up, you may be uh, looking at familiar stuff when you were in school. Those are the things that teachers use in school. Can you see? Can you see any familiar familiar terms? Yeah? Which one is not familiar to you? Omission. Omission. Omission, Omission is the inverted V. Inverted V. If something is missing in the middle, oh. that is inverted V. Okay? Something is missing in the middle of your sentence or in the middle of your two words, then the teacher will put inverted V. Actually, this is something very internationalized, not just being used in our own scenario. GR, grammar. Okay? WO, word order. So, if the word order is wrong, then you will have WO. SP, spelling. L, incorrect choice of Lexis. Uh, and then you have the inverted V, which is omission. X, which is something should be added there. Expression and awkward sentence. Awkward sentence is the whole sentence doesn't make sense. Okay? Then it's awkward. Okay? So they are very familiar because most of the time teachers do this in the classroom. Okay? Okay, implication of uh, error correction to the teachers. First, you need to consider the text context. Whenever you want to uh, amend errors, correct errors, you need to consider the context. If you are teaching language items, then you need to correct language items. You cannot correct other things. Okay? Be aware of the current practices. So, if you are given the opportunity to mark exam papers, take it. Because then you will know the standard of uh, writing, how it's supposed to be. That is how you have to be aware of current practices. Okay? So, if you are given a chance to either mark the PMR paper or SPM English paper, take it. So, then you will know what is actually considered as good essay, error, uh, erroneous essay, or mid, uh, middle essay, or very simple essay. So, you will know. Practice a variety of corrective feedback, meaning that don't just use yourself to correct. Uh, we have seen three types of correction just now. You can ask also the students to correct for their friends. You, they also need to be independent. Cannot just rely on you. Okay, so they need to be independent and they need to also be able to self-correct if you are teaching the advanced class, classes. Let the learner self-correct. Okay, this is actually com uh, combination between the third and the fourth point. Which to correct? Okay, now I want to give you some exercises. Can you get in three? Get in threes, please. How many of you are around? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Two lah, in pairs, in pairs. Get in pairs. You all have to do this. I'm going to call pairs. I want to see whether you are alert or not. Because some of you doesn't seem like you are alert. Okay? Example is, which to correct? Which to correct? I will give you a few sentences on the board And in your pairs Discuss them And then we will discuss I will call up a few pairs So that you uh, will tell us what to correct And then uh, see if the others agree or not Okay? Talk to your pairs Okay, I have got five sentences in your pairs, do the correction. Look at what is supposed to be corrected and you need to correct the sentence. Uh, this is practice before you become teachers. This is what you're going to find in your students' books. So, I'll give you five minutes to correct this sentence. Circle which one to correct and then tell what should be corrected. Uh, give us the correct sentence All the ones in red is All the errors Okay Okay, five minutes I've eaten anything After this, I went to a cafe At 11 o'clock, I went home in my bed Okay Hana and Afika Can you Which one do you correct in this sentence? I have driven Okay uh, Has driven, you will change why? Why do you change that one? Why do you correct that one? Because uh, for I, the rules is to use have. Okay. Uh, is that an error or do you think it's just a slip? It's an error. It's an error, okay. Anything else that you correct? I come back. I came back. Came back, okay. Anything else? Uh, you were 
you correct it into? Is coming. Okay. Anything else that you correct? Brighton. Places may not be so um, so that's uh, we mean um, pressing. So it's okay. But as well, you 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 will sometimes you don't know what it actually means. Okay. Anything else that you will correct? No, okay. Uh, Grace, what about you? Which one do your group correct? Coming and walking. Coming is walking. So what do you uh, meant then? Walking. He is coming, I am Okay, anyone else who got different answer from Wong's group and Grace's group? Heathrow Airport. Heathrow Airport. Okay, can be, you can close one eye. And there? Train, 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 okay. Capital T is okay. Because it's still the same thing, isn't it? Okay, I would, correct, I have flat near school. It will mean something else. It means that you will have a puncture. Or the taxi have a puncture near the school. Flat car. Flat tire. If you say I have a flat, just now meaning that I have a flat tire. So uh, from my turn to my flat by taxi, I have flat near school. Meaning while you are going by the taxi, then the taxi breaks down because of a tire flat. So the meaning changes. Okay. Next one. I give you some instruction how to get to my address or my place. You can come in from Metro Airport to Victoria Station by underground. Literal spelling and after you can come in by Trian to work. Okay, Afrika, this Afrika, I can talk about it. What do you, uh, what do you amend? Uh, address. Address, okay. Anything else? Come, okay. By underground. Spelling and Trian, also spelling. That is really um, <coughs> wrong, is it? Trian, you don't know what Trian is. Okay, anything else have got different answer? By underground. Some instructions, some people would correct that. Okay? Instructions. It's not instruction, it's instructions, isn't it? Okay, number four. I'm very pleasant for me that you spent some days with me in my town. But you needn't go to a hotel. I think it's much better that you go to my house. The form easier to get there is that you take a taxi and indicate my address. Hidayah, which one? Do? Don't be startled. Which one do you? Uh, which one do you correct? Or don't? Or you don't correct at all? Form. The form easier. You will correct that one. Okay. Anything else? No. Naima, what about you? Which one will you correct? I'm very pleasant for me. What should it be? I'm very pleased that you spent. Okay. Uh, the form easier should be the easiest way. Easiest way because the student has mixed up form and way, okay? But not so much of correction in sentence four because you can still understand the sentence. Okay, sentence five. Yesterday I ate dessert of mango pudding. It was very sweet and delicious. Isa, which one would you correct? Yes, sweat. It means something else, doesn't it? Ah, scary. Mango has got sweat. Okay. Uh, so okay, you will uh, you will change sweat. What about dessert? Dessert? I can't it, you can ignore it. Okay. Okay. Uh, again, it depends on your language focus. If you are looking at sentence structure, then the spelling can be ignored, like the first one. This one, you can ignore the airport hitro because you're looking at uh, verbs. 
If you're looking at spelling, then you have to include that. Okay, it depends on the focus of the correction. Okay, all right, very well done. Everyone is alert. So, before we end our class, let's have a look at this one. Yes, this is for exercise. If you can do this meaning, you are able to amend the correction. Uh, it's raining today. Is it? Is it it? She doesn't have a book. Is that is there an error there? No. no. Gotcha. That's a trick, you know. Ah, there's no error there. He likes coffee, doesn't he? Correct. Correct. Yes. Students should not be allowed to fail exam. The sentence itself is wrong. Yeah. The sentence meaning is wrong. But the sentence structure, is it wrong? No. No. Teachers must to study every day. Must study. Must study. Students can fail all their exams and pass the course, can't they? Confusing. Confusing. Look at the verbs, uh, sorry, the, the tenses. It's right. Can, can't. Cut day, okay? You don't have to pay the university registration fee, do you? It's correct. Correct. Okay? Not have you, okay? Because the verb is don't, not have. You haven't paid the university registration, have you? Uh, it's two different meaning. You don't have to pay and you have not paid are two different meaning. Yesterday was Monday. Wasn't it? Wasn't it? Oh, the sentence is wrong. Yesterday was the, the, the Sunday, but the structure was the, the structure is wrong. Okay, so if you can recognize this, meaning that it's actually some of it can be possible, can be ignored. Okay. Okay, these are the references for the uh, um, for the exercises. You can go to the one one stop English .com. There are a lot of exercises on error. Uh, actually, there are more. Actually, the, the, the summary of this is just that you need to think again. You need to go back to the five questions. Previously, the five questions. What errors? Which to correct? How to correct? Because if you remember just now, different groups give different answers. Different teachers will correct different things. It all goes back to what your focus is if your focus is language then you have to correct all the errors in terms of language if your focus is tenses then you have to correct errors which are connected to tenses so it's not everything should be corrected it's what is your focus okay so sometimes we ignore slips like just now uh, airport hitro it means the same we can understand it okay uh, university malaysia science we can understand it is it okay but uh, look for the errors which hampers meaning like sweat and juicy okay so that is the last uh, slide uh, any questions about error no okay if you don't have any questions we will adjourn today Next week, please come on time because there are three presentations. And then next week, we will talk about evaluation in the classroom. Okay? So, we will stop the class here. Thank you very much. And please tell the others who are not here that uh, next week, there are three presentations.